This week I will share with you what a bad day was like during my time in Southside Equity Research. Let's get into it. To set the background, I lived three blocks away from the New York office, and uh, this was a day during the earnings season. I do exaggerate here and there in this piece because that's just what great comedians do. I typically wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning because I choose to, and I brush my teeth, shower, and make coffee. I make coffee for two reasons. One, I'm cheap. Two, I don't want to wait in line when I'm suffering from caffeine deprivation. And, and then I drink my coffee and attempt to do something intellectual, which is to read the Wall Street Journal. Of course, I can't focus and ended up binge watching NBA dunk highlights for an hour. Now it's around 7.30 and it's time to head to the office. Good thing it's only a 15 minute walk while I listen to a podcast about a investing nerd interviewing another investing nerd, knowing I have another full day ahead of trying to convince my clients that every stock under under our team's coverage is still a buy even when the tech sector is wildly overvalued from an absolute perspective. Now it's around 7.45 a.m. and I saw this giant line of people waiting to get breakfast from this flimsy food truck that parks right in front of our office. Owned by this super kind gentleman who sells watery coffee for $1.50 and stale donuts and bagels for $2. That is still the inflation is transitory era pricing by the way. After a 15 minute wait, it was my turn. I got my the usual breakfast sauce sausage on a roll with two eggs because I eat like a champion. Since I spent 15 minutes waiting anyways, I might as well get another large watery coffee. Knowing it's going to be another one of those very long long days with four of our cover companies report after market close at the same time. Finish my bagel, time to swipe my badge and enter the office. My MD doesn't come in until 9am because he's living that family man life with probably three of his kids running circles around him at home every morning. I check my work email and it seems like the calm before the storm. So I went to catch up with my closet buy sider colleague Eric on the hotline retail team. Every conversation with him ends up being an hour because I really enjoy talking to him about stock ideas and different businesses. Now it's around 9am and I guess my MD has finally taken care of some business. He walks in and he's a really good dude and small talks with me briefly but then his office phone rang before he even took off his overcoat. So he had to walk into his corner office, lock the door and got down to serving the client. It's around 9.30 now, the market opens and Julia from Equity Sales wants to connect me with a Midwest client some portfolio manager from a state pension fund who barely trades and he is of course asking us about some legacy tech investments and I say yeah I'm down to chat and end up chatting with him for an hour at least he's long term oriented my MD is finally off the phone and calls me into his office to brainstorm a deep dive note I already know this note is going to be a giant waste of time and no client will read it but hey getting the note done is way easier and less exhausting than convincing him that his idea is not good plus I get more thrill out of watching product marketing folks give us the I told you so stink eye and my boss finding out through the lack of readership and call requests from clients. So I tell my MD I will put together an outline for his review. He usually doesn't even correct my outline anymore because by now I know pretty well what he's looking for. If only he knows what clients are looking for though. But hey isn't 90% of what we associates do on the sell side really for the analysts? instead of for the clients. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now I'm getting hungry even after eating the usual for breakfast. And right before I'm about to rally up some folks for lunch, my phone rang. And I see it's Ashley from Equity Sales. She covers mostly pot shop clients. And y'all know my interest level on talking with some pot shop folks. So I just ignored the call and went upstairs to hang out with the research homies who cover financials. I tried to line up a group of slackers to get lunch together, but it turns out everyone else has real work to do. So I gotta wait for another hour and uh, decided to go back to my desk to do some deep dive on as in drops for fantasy football league. Now it's finally noon. Hopefully second time is the charm. I was able to rally up a coalition of lunch getters. We decided to go to this Lebanese place. But it was 12 o'clock and the line was long. But hey, the storm won't hit until after the market closes anyway. So we're down to wait. I got my chicken shawarma platter with extra chicken. And of course, extra garlic sauce. I know coma inducing meal is probably not a smart move on earnings day. But life is short. Now it's around 12.30. You probably have I've heard most Wall Streeters almost always eat lunches at their desk. I'm just very productive. So I eat lunch in the kitchen most of the time. Now 1 o'clock p.m. and I started prepping the earnings. I am responsible for two companies reporting tonight. What is prepping the earnings you ask? Oh, I hope you didn't think it's rocket science. I just copied last quarter's notes 
into a new template and highlight the numbers to be updated when the actual results come out. Now it's around 3 o'clock p.m. The prep is done. Well, the actual copy and paste took like an hour. For the rest of the time, I read last quarter's earnings transcript for the two companies and went to the vending machine like five times. I am definitely a needle mover for those vending machines and single-handedly contributed to why the chocolate wafers are always sold out. My MD has been in his office chatting with his top commission paying clients, aka the pot shop PMs, about quarterly setups and any channel checks. Man, I don't want his job. He finally came to his senses that four companies are reporting tonight and started tripping out. Without knowing, me and my teammate have done all the prep work and are all good to go. If we count on him to be a good project manager, we will all be homeless even without the recession. So here's a game plan for the night. I will dial into two conference calls and press star one to put my MD in queue so he can congratulate the company on a great quarter and ask management a question. And then later tonight, we also have to do callbacks, which are a group or one-on-one -on -one calls for sales side analysts to ask company management more questions. Trust me, you're not missing out that much. Those callbacks usually end up becoming a giant schmoozing session. So it's just another Another 15 to 45 minute of wasted time for junior sales siders like myself. So now it's 3.45 p.m. and uh, we are all dialed in and star one. Big Boss is in the question queue. We're lock and loaded. Probably a good time for a bathroom run before the headless chicken running around begins. The earnings are all out by now. Two companies beat consensus and raise guidance. The good old beat and raise. And uh, we are buy rated, so the Big Boss is victory lapping. The third buy rated companies the bad. Stock got cut in half, but hey, we're the lead left bankers on the name. So buy rated for management access in investment banking fees, baby. And it's 5 p.m and uh, I have to listen to two earnings calls at the same time. But good thing they're 30 minutes apart from each other. And I'm really just paying attention to positive commentaries to stuff into my earnings notes since something good must have happened. These calls drop in informational value rapidly after the third analyst in the Q&A session. So I started writing my earnings notes and that's where the positive commentary is coming to play. Easy peasy. And then I update the models with the actual results and <laughs> go seek my forecast to match the top end of company's guidance since we're buy rated. Don't tell anybody. Now it's around 7 p.m. and I'm done with all the works, but management callbacks are going to be very late because last quarter we were the first four callbacks, so the company is rotating us to make it fair. This is shaping out to be a midnight end kind of day. Time to get on the meal ordering platform and order dinner from my favorite Thai place four days in a row. It's earning season and I ain't doing no salads. I want to bring some color to my meaningless life. At this point, it really just comes down to some sort of pad, whether it's Pad Thai, Pad Seiyu, or Pad Ki Mao. And I gotta get my Thai iced tea and deep fry crab rangoon. Yes, I stress eat, don't judge. Time for management callback. But my MD barely knew what the quarterly results was for one of my companies because he was hopping between four earnings calls and then had to meet somebody briefly for dinner before coming back to the office. I knew he will ask a super generic question on a callback. As always, I was right. He asked, uh, so what inning are we in for 5G? I mean, you can ask this question to even a farm equipment company, right? So I saw that coming. Now it's 10 p.m. I was barely listening on a callback as I was cranking on the notes and the models. My MD okays my notes and the models and I submitted them for supervisory analyst approval. And of course, those SOBs rejected a note and claiming we were using some provocative note titles. So I had to reward and resubmit. And oh great, now we have a long queue for note approval because it's a peak earnings day on Wall Street. So every sector team was submitting earnings notes. While I wait for the reapproval, I walk around to annoy the oil and gas research guys who have 20 companies report at the same time. Now I feel a little bit better knowing someone else is having a more miserable day than I am. But then I also realized all of the companies sell the same product oil so how hard is that it's around 11 o'clock p.m now the notes are finally approved i hung around a little bit to spiritually support my teammate who is writing a narrative for my md to go on morning call tomorrow to explain the 50 percent blow up on our buy rated name and why we're still bullish I will assume we can just say we are really, really, really long-term oriented. Okay, finally, we're done for the day. My MD heads out and that's green light for me to leave around 10 minutes later. 
I could take a cab, but I live three blocks away. Honestly, it's faster to walk. And the good thing about Manhattan is it's still really bright in midnight because it's a city that never sleeps. So I walk home, shower, and crash in bed. And tomorrow I need to come in at 6 a.m. for the morning call. Another fun day ahead. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, hit like and the bell icon for future content on an insider view of equity research and equity investment management. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.